Spinosaurines, they're definitely animals. And that means a lot of different things, but mainly for this case, it just means they're very, very partial, so it's hard to understand exactly what was happening with them. Case in point, the shirt here, show me the holotype, we don't even have the holotype of the first Spinosaurian ever found. And that's because it was blown up in 1994 during Allied bombing raids in Germany. That said, everything we know about them tells us they should have been really, really great for fossilization. By which I mean, they live near waterways where there's a lot of sedimentation occurring, and if they had died near those waterways, they should have gotten buried. We should have good fossils of them, but we just don't. Outside of a few specimens, specifically of Baryonyx coming from the UK, and of Suchomimus coming from Niger. Now, I emphasized that Baryonyx came from the UK, and even more specifically, England. However, there was another specimen of Baryonyx, also very partial, that was found in Spain from maybe around the same time or actually a good bit later. And this paper essentially went back and went, okay, well, how old is it for sure? And also, is it Baryonyx? And first of all, no, it's much later in time. In fact, potentially the youngest Spinosaurine that's been found in Europe ever. And that's really interesting because even potentially just 10 to 20 million years later, all of the Spinosaurians disappear from the fossil record, including things like Spinosaurus. This is also really interesting because they went through and were able to show, no, it's not Baryonyx, it's probably its own new genus. Rioja venatrix lacustris is basically only known from the rear limbs. There is a single vertebra that probably came from somewhere near the middle of the back, but it's hard to tell exactly where. However, this is the same fossil that was initially called Baryonyx, and based on this study, it's pretty different. There's a number of different features that really help to suggest this, one of which is the pubic boot on the pubic bone, essentially where the bottom of it is, where it's more triangular in shape, and also the front side of it points upwards. Like Ithiovenator, this has a straight edge across the back part of it, but that's very different from things like Baryonyx, which has a curved margin on that edge. Meanwhile, it's also different from Ichthyovenator in having the front portion of it actually turned upwards towards the top of the body. Not something we see in Ichthyovenator. So it's different from both of these animals, and it really helps to show that, yeah, it really is a distinct species that we, again, just have a very partial fossil of. Still, again, it's younger than most of the other ones, meaning potentially this is the last of the Baryonychines that we find in Europe. Unfortunately, the phylogenetics really aren't much help, and that's because the phylogenetics show it in different places depending on the methods being used. It could have potentially been a baryonychine, meaning something very similar to baryonyx. On the other hand, it could have been something very like Spinosaurus, and that adds a little bit of confusion. In general, most phylogenies do split these two groups of the Spinosaurines, and things more like baryonyx, and things more like Spinosaurus. However, there has been some suggestion that potentially the Baryonychines did evolve directly into the things more like Spinosaurus. So potentially Rioja venatrix could have just been on that line towards the more Spinosaurus-like animals and it's hard to know for sure. Meanwhile though, the rocks were dated to about 121 million years ago, which is before most of the Spinosaurus-like animals start to show up. So it does help kind of lean in that direction. Additionally, it helps to really show that Iberia was really, really unique, and that's because there's a ton of Spinosaurines known from that area, both Portugal and Spain. In the UK, you still have a lot, such as Baryonyx, Ceratosuchops, as well as things like Reparovenator, so good diversity. In North Africa, you have things like Sigilmosasaurus and Spinosaurus. There's a few known from South America, such as Irritator and Oxalia, and then Cyanosaurus and Ichthyovenator come from Southeast Asia. Meanwhile, in Iberia, which was its own separate subcontinent at the time, you have much more diversity. You have Rioja venatrix, but also things like Camariasuchus, Iberospinus, Protolithus, and Vaibana venatrix, which shows this really, really diverse ecology of the different Spinosaurians that would have been present in Iberia. So this really seems to be a hot spot for their evolution where they could have very easily spread, evolved new traits. And for example, if it was the birthplace of the Spinosaur Ids, the more Spinosaurus-like animals, they could have spread from there across other parts of the globe, including parts of North Africa where Spinosaurus is found, which wouldn't have been that far away from Iberia at the time. So the evidence is that Spinosaurines were pretty unique and a very late divergent group of the Megalosaurs. And a lot of that is based on that triangular shape of the pubic boot, which Megalosaurs also share. But that also means that essentially, despite them being the last known group of the Megalosaurs, we know almost nothing about them, despite everything about what we know of their lifestyles, hanging around water, meaning that they should be preserved better. 
We just don't have that, which is very unfortunate. Hopefully we'll get a few more good fossils of Spinosaurines and hopefully we can try and actually piece together their evolution because there's a lot of issues in their general evolution, such as just not having the holotype of the original fossil. So hopefully we're able to find some more and really figure out what the heck is happening.